Alright guys, I made a video. I just made a video. It'll be coming up after this. I always think of stuff afterwards, but how to check your radiator with one of these temp guns. I want to show you all a trick. If you're out on the trail and your stuff gets starts getting hot and you don't have any way to turn your auxiliary fan on without the AC running, because if you're running your AC out in the on the trails, which I do too, I do it too because I don't like riding in the heat, but let me show you all this real quick and I'll put the other video up. I wanted to add this in. Now you're, I want to show you all something. My AC's been running. It's bright out here. You can see it sweating. It's been running, okay? That condenser, that condenser in front of your radiator there, you shoot that thing, let's see. See it's 114 degrees? See what it is on this side. 100, see that? That condenser is 132, 33 degrees. So you're pulling 133 degree air through that to that radiator. To your your radiator. It'll get it hot. So now if you turn your say you turn your AC off, okay, then your auxiliary is going to kick off until it gets up to about 220 and it'll kick back on. I'm going to show you all a trick that I've done out in the woods. Matter of fact, when I was in North Carolina at a, a Jeep Fest in the mountains and it was running hot on me. You see this wire right here? You find your wire. If you're out in the trail and this is going on, you're running hot and you need to try to cool it down. You see that clutch running, that compressor? You find your wire to your compressor clutch. It's right here on mine. You unplug that. That a kicking compressor off. Okay, now you're not pumping Freon through your system, and it'll keep your fan running, and it'll drop. See there? Gonna drop down to 97 degrees. Okay, when your when your refrigerant goes through your evaporator core there, it sprays in there as a cold liquid. And when it starts coming back through this way on the high pressure side, the high pressure side right here it goes down goes down that way through a spray nozzle. This is a suck through a spray nozzle inside your evaporator core inside the tea gets cold goes through there comes back by the time it gets back through here it's hot again I mean that's that ain't really explaining how the AC works that good but I can tell you that too I'm just saying if you got your AC running out there on the trail that condenser for your AC in front of your radiator is gonna get about 130 degrees now, I don't know, everybody might know that, but some people might not know that. Now, if you get out there and get in the tight, and your shit starts getting hot on you, and you need to cool it down, and you want to keep riding, you can unplug the, the uh, compressor, the wire to the, to the clutch on the compressor, leave your AC on, and then all your auxiliary fan will keep running, and it'll cool it down. You know, that's a quick, quick tip good little tip there if you get in the tight it'll help you out but anyway i'm gonna put the video up about you guys how to show you guys how to test, test that radiator and see if it's stopped up and i appreciate you watching i know this is a loud video and it's all kind of crazy recorded but I'm just trying to show you guys that that right there will help you out big time if you ever get in the tight and that that's on 98 model you know i don't know where your compressor wire is on your other ones you could probably put a switch in there somewhere where you could jump out switch the clutch off leave your ac on and all your shit still run without it getting hot on you all right brother man y'all i'll put the video up bye i'll go over something today with you guys um how to test if your radiator stopped up now those radiators on the xj's they, it, it doesn't take much to get them stopped up in the bottom but I'm going to show you guys a way get you one of these little temp guns you can get it from anywhere you know parts you know like tool supply place they think they got a cheap one at Harbor Freight that'll work 
this is a craftsman but it ain't got to be a craftsman but you'd see you know it checks the temperatures all right let's walk out here it's gonna be loud now because my jeep's running and, and and it's a loud jeep but i'm gonna show y'all something how to check your radiator to see if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing i got a lot of uh, interest on that Heck, let's just walk out there i got a lot of interest on that running hot video and uh, i want to show y'all how to check for your radiator being stocked up it's gonna be loud now but i'll just talk over it <clears throat> got it it's been running for a few minutes i think it's up now my my uh my thermostat's cut out on my jeep i cut the valve out on it where it's just got the uh, hole for the 190 through it that way i gotta worry about it sticking but i'm gonna show y'all how to check this stuff see these uh hopefully you can see it let me get over here and maybe see it better see where the radiator see my red dot you see those that's your cores coming through your radiator every one of them all the way down your water comes through those spots there what you need to do it's gonna be hard to do man without somebody helping me but you take that temp gun it's 136 Go down to the next one, 132. Go down to the next one, 134. 128. 118. 119. Now that's shooting on the cores. 119. That very bottom core is one that's 116 degrees. Now let's go to this side, the very bottom core. Y'all can see this now. Look at it like this. I'm sorry guys, it's hard to illustrate on like this. Okay, my very bottom four is what concerns me. On this side, let's see, we got 124. And one above it is 136. So there's water getting through it. Let's go to the one right above it. We're at the very four before the bottom. It's at 137. We're going to go to the other side. Now, it's cooling it down. Let's see, let's see if I can get the focus on it. 118 degrees. 130. Bottom 123. Okay, that's the one we're looking at, 123. See how it gets really cool at the bottom, 117. And it's gonna, it's gonna flow down the tank, but if you read the tank, if you read the tank, the bottom of the tank, it's 137, 36 degrees on the tank. Now you go over to where that core runs through, it should be the same right there. But it's, 123 see there's no water going through that anyway you could take let me go in here and see if I can illustrate this a little bit better I know that was terrible man but it's about the only way I could show you guys if you take let's get something to write with here Yeah, I know there's a lot of problems. That's that wiring diagram again for that winch. I know there's a lot of overheating problems with those Jeeps. Now, if you're looking at your radiator, say this is your radiator. Most of y'all guys probably know this, but those cores go through there like that. The solid aluminum plate piece in between your fins. In between them fins that's where your water goes through now if you take your gun I'm not a very good artist but okay that's the radiator if you take your gun and you shoot it on that tank right there at the bottom say if your Jeep's 190 that should be whatever that temperature is there the, the that core right beside it should be that temperature 
Now, when you get over here on this side, it should be cooled down some. But if you're reading 190, 190, 190, and you get down, these are the ones that always stop up on it, the ones at the bottom, because all the sediment goes down and gets in them tubes. Now, if you're reading 190 degrees there, and you got 118 or 100 or whatever way lower on those cores going across there there's no water going through it you know it makes sense don't it it stops up and that's what makes these things run hot because you got to have every bit of that radiator on that xj because it will run hot on you if it don't mine stopped up on this one and this one and it's only been in there a couple years and i got clean fluid in it it's just it just happens that that engine's been rebuilt and uh, you know, that stuff gets in this cooling system and it gets in here. But mine stopped up right down here in them two cores. If you take your, like I said, if you take your heat gun, temp gun, checker, you check that tank and it's 190, this should be 190 going through here. Now those, those cores going across there, if y'all don't know what they look like, they're oval like this, right? Some of them go straight through like that. And some of them have little itty bitty squares in there for rigidity. You see that? You get out of the dang line. You see that? If you cut this in half right here and look that way, if you look this way through it, that's what it would look like. And see, it don't take nothing for them to stop up. And if you get these stopped up and that lowered it right here, you loosen a quarter of your cooling capacity. That's what's been going on with mine. Mine's been wanting to get up past 210 on me lately. And I figured I would go out there and check it and show you guys how to do this. But all you got to do, go get your temp gun, shoot your cores, shoot your tank, and shoot your core. Shoot your tank, shoot your core. It should be about the same. You get down there, if it's 180 up here, or 30 or 50 up here in all these, and you get down here and it's 90, you know, and this tank right there is, is uh, 150, then something's going on, that water ain't going through there, or the coolant is not going through there. You should be, you know, say 190 here, probably about 189 over here. You should see a temperature drop across that thing. Same thing on this side, whatever that tank is, these should be. And it, it'll be a lot cooler on this side probably. Anyway guys, a short little video. I know it wasn't very good recording. If y'all ask me some questions on this deal, I can help you out with it, but, uh, you can check that pretty easy if you got one of these things. Just get it running, get it up to temperature, and just start going down your cores, and reading them, reading them, reading them, reading them. They're gonna drop a little bit as you go down, but they still should be the same as that tank right there. You should be able to put it on that tank, put it on that core going across, and it should be close to the same because it's just water going through there. You know, it comes, it, it just goes straight through these, and that's what it looks like on the inside of that core right there them things get stopped up real easy i mean it ain't take nothing to stop that up all right guys there ain't no way to really clean these radiators out because they're plastic you can try it but it usually don't work for me usually what i got to do is just change the radiator out back in the day when you had copper radiators you sent it to the shop they cut the tanks off they rod it out what they call rotting out they take a rod and they stick through the, every one of them holes in that core and rod it out that's what rotting out means but they used to be able to do that, but everything's plastic now, so you just have to buy another one. Anyway, guys, I thought I would uh, show you guys that. I'm messing with mine today a little bit, um, and uh, I figured I'd make y'all some short video here. If y'all got any questions, ask me. You know I'll answer them. Take it easy. Bye.